How y'all folks doing out there? Figure I dabble for a minute, man. I um <clears throat> just got back in. Me and Mr. Nick went up there and got um them carpets knocked off our head for a minute. You know, got a little haircut. But uh, got any questions about the show? Mike with a mic three one three at gmail dot com. That's Mike with a mic three one three at gmail dot com. Go shop at deucefireclothing dot com. Um. DetroitCousins.com, PlatinumStatus.com, CreatedByJones.com, and Betty's Girls Party Event Planning. Um, that's my wife's stuff, party event, you know, the table setups and all that. When y'all want to party and get your groove on and all that, let them set that up for y'all. And we can um, get to what we got to get to. I was saying um, we um, went over there um above all cuts by the way my man db over there man it's 19229 west warren that's 19229 west warren in detroit uh phone number 313-522-9132 that's 313-522-9132 that's my man db over there man he been whacking my hair for a long time now i was just telling mr nick that man he he been cutting my hair since the shit back in the way back in the day, man, for real. Twenty five years, thirty years probably. Mm-hmm. He a cool dude too, man. I was telling Nick on the ride back, having the right barber, the bar uh, barber, yeah, having the right barber, like that. That's crucial, man. Like, cause they they talk to everybody in the community, like you know what I'm saying, like all the kids and stuff, and DBB. You know, he be bullshitting around, but he a good dude, man. And um, he get good advice because you get the wrong, you put your kid in the wrong barber chair and he be telling your kid some dumb shit and, and he go to the wrong barber shop and they all in there on some bullshit. Your kid going to be picking up the wrong shit. So you got to be picky, especially like single mothers. You know what I'm saying? Having y'all babies around the wrong people. The barber shop is real important. Mm-hmm. So, shout out to my man DB. You know, we had different conversations when I go in there by myself versus when I'm in there with my son. When I'm in there with my son, it's a uh, we be on daddy mode and you know all that stuff. And I don't even think they they might turn the cussing off when the kids be in there. But when it's just men in there, y'all know how we do, fellas. I ain't gonna give up none of the secrets or nothing. But like I say to women. The, the, the barber is a real crucial part of the community so shout out to them so but what i want to dabble on today man i was uh listening to some stuff over these last couple of days and i heard a conversation well we had a conversation on clubhouse it with a girl and they were talking about what makes what make a man a good father that's kind of where it went to. She was telling her story or whatever. But anyway, uh, I guess I got to do my disclaimers up front. Like, um, I'm not talking about nobody. I'm not trying to take no, like, jab at nobody. I'm not shooting no subliminal shots because I don't have to. <clears throat> Ain't nobody going to do shit to me. Um, it's my life, my opinions, my experiences, and it's just that, man. You know what I'm saying? They just mine. So I don't know if that shoe fit, Cinderella. You better take your ass to that goddamn ball and get the fuck up out my goddamn face. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can say because I ain't here to argue with nothing about how I feel and how I see things because, you know, I be basically on this mic freestyle, and I tell y'all that all the time. That's what I do. I just – I have a couple topics and I talk about them. So if it go a certain way, I just want to put my disclaimer up up front because I know I be reckless out the mouth sometimes and I ain't trying to offend nobody sometimes to be just, just the truth about shit. So that's what it is. Just know that it always comes from a place of love and I'm trying to fix shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe 
relieve some stress or something. You know what I'm saying? I remember I chatted with a guy. And he like, yeah, man, I feel like that, but blah, blah, blah. You just can't say that shit, Mike. Yeah, you can. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just want to get that out the way. And um, I don't know, nail a few talking points to the floor, I should say that. You know, because I might be all over the place because something like this is, um, these are the topics that kind of hit home with me because I have kids and I've been through things, but... <laughs> Um, I do believe that the key to fixing kids and the key to us being good fathers and having good families and all of that, I really think it boils down to women and how they react and how they decide to like co-parent with us because 99% of the time they got the kid. And even in my marriage, my wife is still the key to it you know what i'm saying how she treat me how she treat my kids i know what i do but you know if she running around with aggression trying to match my aggression that's not good you know what i'm saying and that's why i say you know not to put all the pressure on a woman but i think that's just kind of how it go in my mind you know what i'm saying i don't know if that's right or wrong but you know that's just how i feel about that I just want to nail some stuff to the flow. Also, um, if you had a baby by a nigga who ain't shit, own that. You know what I'm saying? And basically just shut the fuck up and listen because, like, you could have easily took little Darrell Jr. or whatever to the hitman office. So most of this shit probably don't even apply to you if your baby daddy ain't shit and you know he just ain't shit. You got to, you know, you got to do that. This is kind of for them situations that need that quick tune up, you know what I'm saying? Or that quick oil change, you know, just to make shit run a little better or whatever. I want to focus on the ones that, you know, can be saved because we all know that some of these niggas can't be saved. Y'all shouldn't have had kids by these niggas. So it's too late for that. Um, we can talk to y'all about moving on from that. But like I said, standing there arguing with a nigga ain't going to do nothing. So, you know. Your situation need a whole new motor, scruts and tie rods and all kind of shit. <laughs> mm -mm. I ain't here for no full restoration. I'm here. I do tune-ups and oil changes over here. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but um, I just feel, you know, first things first, man, you got to be honest. And we know, like, <clears throat> most of y'all hoes still ruin y'all boat down the denial. The the Nile River, y'all ruin like a motherfucker, and y'all think y'all going somewhere. Y'all ain't getting nowhere, man. You got to be honest first, and that's cool, but I ain't here for that shit today, so fuck y'all. Um, when y'all ready to keep it 100, I'll be sitting right here. Mm -hmm. Mike with a mic, 313 at gmail.com for anybody that want to keep it 100, because that's really the key. And... um. Like I say, man, that's just another piece that I had to say. You know, you got to be, you ain't got to be honest with me. It's about being honest with you and your child in your situation. Fuck me. I'm just some nigga talking into a microphone because if you honest about who you are in your situation, how you got in it, I don't know. You might realize that you standing in the wrong line. You know what I'm saying? For real. That this shit ain't even for me. And let me dabble on that. Like being honest about your situation would be you looking in the mirror and saying to yourself that you fucked up having that baby. And that can be just as simple as that. That take, man, like that'll take a shitload of just stress and shit off of your shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Like, trust me, man. Once you get to a point where you just like, you know what? I your baby not a mistake, but having them was the mistake. Let's move on from there. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to do that. So, I don't know, man. Go on ahead and peel them goddamn lashes off or something. Pop them fake-ass nails off. Peel that goddamn lace front off and chisel off them 82 pounds of makeup and all that bullshit. And look yourself dead in that fucking eye and be fucking honest. And popped them contacts out too I saw a video a lady took all the shit off Wiped her eyebrows off And some of you hoes Gotta pop your teeth out Whatever it takes To get you there Get there You know what I'm saying 
look down into that abused and abandoned ass goddamn ego and just keep it a buck because you know and say it man i should never had this baby <laughs> but he here and we go what we gonna do what we gonna do you know i don't know man you highly like or or not even that your baby daddy ain't shit maybe you just had a baby with a regular guy you know what i'm saying a high school graduate who's gonna just be a manager at taco bell for the rest of his life understand that's the guy you had a baby with once you admit that we can start to fix things and you won't be so mad and all kind of shit but if you're not i don't know you'll realize that michael not even talking to you in some of these cases so go on drive your finger down on that goddamn delete button and keep that goddamn comment to yourself that's what i'm saying but <clears throat> now that that's out the way um let's just dive into the shit man like the question was like what makes a man a good father and me personally i think it's more about effort you know what i'm saying like and then who decides if a man is a good father i i think it's the mother in the state even though it shouldn't be you know what i'm saying i think it should be the child or if, if he's you know hitting checkpoints and knocking shit off the list everybody know what a good daddy is we know what they look like the ones you know take care of your kid and you're there for them and all that stuff if they doing all of that then you know that's that's what it to me that makes him a good father you know it it ain't got nothing to do with what happened between you and that man you know what i'm saying and that's them two different classes and that only affects his overall grade as a man when it comes to y'all women picking him as a mate or as a husband or some nigga to fuck with or whatever that's the only reason you can bring in that he's a cheater when it you know comes to him being a father you know because a lot of women do that they be like he cheated on me so he's automatically a bad father and that's not true because we got to be honest on that because there's some wonderful fathers out there who just shitty ass boyfriends man and fucked up husbands and that's where you know to to make things better and make it easier to raise the child that's where women got to be honest man like even though it might hurt because you really can't say he's a bad father if he knocking shit off the list and he just not with you you a single woman you're not a single mother and you know once we do that I think we will have better turnout on these kids. I really believe that. And let me tap on that for one for a minute. You know the whole list thing. Like, if the nigga is like, if he love the baby and he's showing it, and he in the child's life, nigga paying child support, like he helping you out, raise the kid, and you know shape and mold the kid in a good way. Um, he don't be teaching teaching your baby no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? If he cordial with you and you know he do what he can do i mean he goes to games and pick the baby up baby over his house or whatever the fuck if he just on deck then you know that's a good father to me you know what i'm saying uh if he do all that and he fucked your sister he's still a good father just a dirtbag ass boyfriend and you can call it like that you know what i'm saying and we just got to uh, get these ladies to quit trying to push those things together to take credit away from him being a father. That's all I'm saying. Those things, those are two different classes to me. And, um, you know, you could be a, a, you're a man. That's the overall. You got boyfriend, father, friend, son. Those are different classes. They all come together for your overall grade as a man, but... You know, you got some motherfuckers who treat their mother like they ain't shit, but then treat these hoes like queens. And, you, and it's just, you know, that's just how people are made up. And we got to learn how to slice and dice. And when you learn to do that, you will learn what you can deal with and can't. And it'll be easier to move on. But and that's what I mean by like women deciding who is a good father, because a man would be knocking shit off the list left and right. And then he go dip his dick in a scripper or something. And she'll call him a deadbeat daddy because, you know, they broke up and she keeping a kid from him. You know, that that's the kind of shit that fucks the kid up. But that's what it kind of all boiled down to. Or another thing 
women do is say a man is a deadbeat when he not reaching her expectations of what she feel or what she had in her mind of what he should be or what her she thought the man that she would have a child by would be or how he should be like you know what i'm saying and to be honest those expectations is not for him they for you you know what i'm saying you did that and that goes back to just you know being honest about you and your situation like how you put yourself in it or allowed yourself to be put in it because you know how some of y'all hoes be talking about like how you told him not to shoot your shit up you let him fuck you raw, and you told him, you promise you're going to pull out? Like, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. That bum-ass nigga was trying to nail you to the flow and secure a place to stay. Like, you knew that nigga didn't have no car, or you knew he was an average nigga. You knew that he had a woman. Whatever the fuck the case may be, y'all women quick to try to be like, well, he nutted in me. Like, you let him fuck you raw and nut in you. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you knew. Um, that's just crazy when I be hearing that it's, it, y'all say it take two to tangle on one side but then when it come to this over here y'all want to do that man some of y'all hoes just need to be honest y'all f- love the feeling of a nigga just busting off a goddamn load of jizz in you man just fucking keep it a hundred man like for real some of y'all women love to be pregnant and love the attention that you get from being pregnant all them baby showers and gender reveals and all that shit. And uh, I guess I hit that one time. Like, I heard that you only supposed to have two baby showers when you have a boy and when you have a girl. If you got six kids, you shouldn't have had six baby showers. You should have had two. But whatever. Some of y'all love that attention or whatever. And I know I ain't the only one that see that shit with these hoes. I'm just saying. Take responsibility, man, for letting that nigga bareback you and you wasn't on no kind of birth control enough to protect yourself if you like to let niggas raw you and you know that that's what i'm saying being honest is the fucking key if you know you like niggas to raw you and you know you love a nice warm batch of jizz running up your ovaries and you don't want to hide no kids get on some birth control like for real if you i said that before on the podcast man i swear people most scared of having kids than catching aids you a raw motherfucker and tell them to pull out that's stupid like what we like for real but that's whatever man but god forbid you blame yourselves but don't feel bad though i'm i'm i'm, I'm the guy that you could talk to man i went through the same shit all that shit about me not wanting kids or why I think they had them. None of that shit mattered once I decided to dip my ride in that water with no gems go on. That was just simple as that. Once I realized that, I said, fuck it, man. What we gonna do from here? But fuck that. Point is, you know who you had a kid with. <laughs> you know who you let raw you and you know who you raw to the fellas. But and having that child ain't gonna change no nigga or give them no pay raise. Women got it. That's why I say this is the stuff about being honest about that shit because I just really believe that once you take that step back and be honest about certain shit, we could we can really start to raise these babies right. And I had to do it too. So Michael Jackson voice, man, you are not alone for real. I remember shit I was going through and that I went through, I, I should say. And I'm just here to help if I can because, you know, end of the day, it's only hurting these babies, man. Like, for real. I was listening to that girl talk, man, and it was just like, damn, like, seemed like she don't give a fuck about that baby. She cared more about getting her point across. About proving how fucked up of a dude he was or whatever, which, you know, it only hurts, you know, it, it, it. doing things that way is going to end up hurting us when we standing over this motherfucker's casket or we got to talk to this motherfucker through a glass for the next 47 fucking years because he done killed somebody because he running around this bitch all fucked up carrying these heavy ass bags that the mom and the daddy giving them to carry because 
we just refused to be honest, you know what I'm saying? Like for real. And cause we couldn't get along for the fucking seven minute exchange of dropping a baby off and picking them up. Somebody always gotta say some slick shit. Yeah, I see your ugly ass bitch or oh you brought that whole ass nigga with you. All kind of shit, man, instead of just being honest about Hey, I'm still hurt and I want you back or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know. It just be crazy, but I think it's a lot of mixture of things, but um I want to dabble on like women not accepting the man for who he is. You know what I'm saying? And that was kind of the topic of the conversation with the lady on uh we was talking to like, you know, you had a baby with a regular guy and ain't nothing wrong with regular. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, too, I can, I guess I could throw on women. Like, what's wrong with regular? Like, for real, that shit is crazy, man. Or, or in my case, when I had my kids, man, I just simply wasn't a man at all. You know what I'm saying? I had my babies early and I remember my oldest kids getting, uh, their mother getting mad because I was a broke kid. You know, like, and then when she started tripping, I started tripping, like, mad because I only can give you $30. It's like, bitch, I'm, I work at KFC. Like, I'm a student athlete. Like, you know, and we fighting in front of the kids. And, nah, I can't see them because I called her a fat bitch or some shit like that and all kind of shit, man. Or us fighting in front of them and they grow up thinking, like, that's how people get along. You got to argue and fight. You got to be toxic. Y'all throw that word around like it's a cool word. It's not. And all that shit. And they grow up thinking that's how you handle shit. All because her not accepting our situation. Or me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm just speaking from that side. Like, you know, listening to the girl or whatever. Because in my head, I'm not. This is most men. And y'all ladies, y'all get mad if you want to. Because like me and most niggas, we like, bitch, I told you don't have that motherfucker. I told you I was broke. I told you I ain't want to be with you. I told you I had a wife. I told, and, and that's what I mean about being honest about that kind of part to even raise the kid right or whatever. Because like I ain't, I was, like I said, I was a kid myself. And I don't know, man. Y'all know how women love to equate um, how much a man loves his child based on how much money he makes like if a nigga if you had a baby with a nigga that work a crew member at fucking popeyes then understand that you're only gonna get 30 40 50 dollars a week from that man and just learn to live with that you getting mad and yelling and all this stuff and breaking stuff and trying to keep the kids from him until he step his game up he's a high school graduate you think he's about to go work at wells fargo and just go from making 835 an hour to 150,000 a year because you said so man come on now for real but even then y'all claim to be super women you know y'all want to be these super mothers and say you know, you say, fuck a nigga, I got me in minds and all that goofy shit. Y'all do that, but then still want child support. And that's another thing, too, ladies. Like, quit having these babies on the hope that you got it. You know what I'm saying? Be honest about that. And that's And that everything is going to be okay. Like, do, do y'all not see the statistics, man? Like, you, you know you only graduated from high school. You know you only a CNA. Go Google what the fuck they max out at and you will see your future if you stay on that path that's why at my job i know what we cap out at so i'm looking at my head well am i okay staying where i'm at for the next 20 years i'm cool with it am i gonna do things to make it better yeah but for the time being this is where we at Hey, Janetta, this is what the fuck we can do. We ain't getting no motherfucking yacht. We ain't we ain't running around this bitch in no thousand dollar shoes and all that. No, we we got enough to cover the shit we need and do a little partying and go on a couple vacations. But it ain't about to be no motherfucking <laughs> Lamborghinis around this motherfucker. You can get that shit out your mind. And then we ain't even about to argue about it because I'm going to be honest about it. I want to do this. Janetta hit me with shit left and right. I want to do this. I want to go here. All right. 
We got to save. We got a plan. Ain't no just jumping out the window and don't try to act like I'm letting you down when I can't do it. Because I, I can't do it. I, it ain't like I refuse to do it. I can't. I can't buy you a Lamborghini. So you might as well not even get mad about that. You want a Lamborghini nigga? Go get your Lamborghini nigga. That's how I feel about that. Yeah, I try to be become a Lamborghini nigga if you want to help me do that. But I'm not finna. Nah, man. That's why I say, man. Phew. Got to understand where you at, man, and can't be doing that. But, you know, y'all say y'all got it and everything going to be okay and shit don't be being okay, man. You ain't no fucking lawyer and you ain't making money like that. So <laughs> you don't got it and that's okay. Like, ask and accept the fucking help. You know what I'm saying? That you're getting or back to what I said at the beginning, you can go on and make that appointment to see the DC sniper and get that nigga up out of here. Like y'all try to act like that's a bad thing. Some of y'all shouldn't have had these babies and some of y'all that's pregnant now don't have that baby. You, you're putting yourself and that child in a fucked up situation and that man, you add an extra stress and tension to your life because you want to say that you got it and you don't. You make 18000 a year. You're probably giving 12 of that up to rent. <laughs> you living off five, $6,000 a year, leaning on that income tax time door every year. Like, do you really want to live like that because you want to be a mother and try to prove some point to somebody who don't really give a fuck? Because people really don't care. We got our own problems. So that's all I'm saying, man. I just, it just be no reason to fight, man. I mean, like I say, I remember going through shit like that, man. And it's just like, you know, she slapped these expectations on me and the shoes will be 80. And I like, I'm like, well, I got 40 and she like, you ain't shit. And it's like, come the fuck on, man. Like, I remember buying my kids Christmas gift and her, her response was like, that's it. Like, come on, man. That shit fucked me all the way up, man. And that's another thing, too. Like, I, I mean... I ain't trying to come down on y'all women, but y'all know how I feel. For us to fix it, y'all got to fix it. Like, for real. Like, even though we fucked it up, and sometimes we got to fix shit that we didn't break. We do that shit all the time. Kids go in the kitchen, something, break a plate. Psh, we got we to gotta sweep it up. So won't nobody come along and step on it and cut their foot. That's what we clean shit up for so our kids won't have to come along and step on our bullshit and cut their goddamn feet. Some of y'all leave them plates broke and glass, all kind of shit all through your house. And your kid rolling in and getting fucked up. And y'all don't care because you arguing about how much the plate costs, who bought the plate, if he... Why he talking about your plate, this my house, and all kind of shit y'all doing. Meanwhile, your kid over here rolling around getting cut the fuck up and fucked up. But that's it. But this ain't me shooting shots, but all of this ain't about me. I was just chilling. Like I said, I was just chilling on my new hangout clubhouse and was just in there listening to this chick, man. And she was talking about how her baby daddy wasn't shit man for like a few hours like she was digging on this nigga man and then after asking her questions like we realized that this man wasn't a bad father like he was just broke <laughs> and he was a bad boyfriend like she said something about the nigga like being fresh out of jail not fresh out he got out and she said October 2020 nigga did I guess he did a few years like eight years or some shit like that. I'm just trying to set the shit up. But don't nail me to the flow on none of this. But the nigga was like, he got out like October 2020. He got out. He got a fucking job. Or what she say? The nigga work at a fucking bodega or whatever the fuck they be talking about in New York. So he's an ex-con. Like making fucking, I don't know what they make, 675. I don't know. I don't want to say nothing wrong or disrespect the man because he's working a job and he's trying, he's fresh out, he's trying to go on the right path. And she talking about what her child deserves. Like, my kid got to play with these kids and just embarrassing my child and all. And like, she was on, she was on her shit. And I, I, and the shit hit me because that's the kind of shit I swear I went through with my kid's mother. We lived in the Hummer Gardens. Poor than the motherfucker. She ain't got no goddamn job. I ain't got no motherfucking job. But for some reason, we decided to have a goddamn kid. We decided to have two goddamn kids. 
And then she want to flip around and talk about why my kids ain't got no goddamn gold airplane. Bitch, because I can't afford it. And you fucking knew that. You can't either. And now, you know, and she was like, he work at the bodega and I know he get paid every week. That man probably making $138 a goddamn week. He got to eat. He got to fucking pay his bill. Like, it, you shouldn't have had the motherfucker. Like, let's get, let's say that. That's what the fuck I'm saying, man. Talking about what other kids got. Them kids, mom and daddy together, and the daddy work at the fucking plant, and the, the mama is a goddamn school teacher. You over here compete with these motherfuckers. Maybe you should have fucked with him. But y'all don't want to admit that. You fuck with the wrong nigga. Like, and this is the crazy part, though. Before I, you know, get back to my shit, because I ain't trying to be on this bitch all day, but she was talking shit about this nigga. And he had the kids while she was on there talking shit about him to a room full of strangers. No, it was like 30 people in there, probably, I don't know, 20, 30 people. And none of us know her because we was asking her questions. And she running her life story down to a room full of strangers and then come to find out that he's an ex-con. And she, she started off with how he ain't shit and he a deadbeat. But after a few questions, he's an ex-con. He do got a job. And he had the kids while she's on here talking shit about him to strangers. But anyway, <laughs> for real, I'm just saying, man. That's just, that's just, that was just the question that I, I had for her. And I asked any other woman, like, do y'all care about y'all baby daddy feelings? Like, that's what I mean about, like, being honest, too. Like, you did, this is all about that, like. If you don't, if you don't, tell them, tell yourself that, you know what I'm saying? Because whatever the reason, what he did to you, because you feel like he don't love your baby, whatever the reason is, you got to tackle that so you can learn to operate better and let the anger go. You know what I'm saying? Like, just say it to him so he'll know how to operate, like, within that or around it, or if he want to operate it with it at all tell him fuck you you let me down fuck you and then he he can respond and say all right well you feel that way i keep my twenty dollars y'all don't want to do that y'all want to shit on y'all want him to stand here so you can shit on him after you made a bad mistake with your body that's what i don't know man because i'm telling you man like i swear like it was a, it was a time that came where I just knew that my oldest kid's mother like never gave a fuck about my feelings now that I look back on it. I'm talking about from day one. Like I like and I used to run around this bitch, man, trying to trying to make her care, trying to reach them fucking expectations and to the point where she really was having full control over my fucking emotions and shit. Like, to the point where I wanted to, like, hurt somebody. Like, for real. Like, all of this shit about questioning if I love my kids. And, you know, well, you didn't do this, so that means you don't care. When the truth is, I didn't buy it because I can't afford it. I don't know how that equates to me not loving them. How do me working at a fucking bodega giving you... 50% of my income, I only made $100, I'm giving you 50. <laughs> ain't, niggas ain't doing that. So I give you, that makes him a good father. If a nigga got $100 and he give you 50, he's a good fucking father. Fuck what you're talking about. I mean, it's financially, he's a good father. Because niggas ain't coming off of half of their money. I'm not. And I'm married. Like, that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, it's, it's hard for a nigga to work and then hand a motherfucker half of your money think about that and then for the person to take it and then say it ain't enough come on man get the fuck out of here i just know that you know that's the shit or that's what i'm saying that that kind of disrespect but if that's the case then be honest but that kind of disrespect towards a man who trying we ain't talking about these ain't shit niggas the nigga that's trying that's the kind of shit that make a man walk away from his kids and be hurt walking away, crying like a motherfucker. You don't see him crying because it's back to you. But that's the shit I'm talking about. 
nigga be like, fuck that bitch and them goddamn kids, man. I know that's how I was a few times, man. But but like once I accepted that she never gave a fuck or ever will give a fuck, like about my feelings, I was able to relax and just be myself. So that'd be the advice to fellas. Like if she's just tripping and she's just twisting the knife on you, my nigga, learn to operate within that, around that, or not at all. I don't like niggas running off on their kids, but I don't want y'all fighting in front of them neither. So if a nigga got to say fuck them kids, ladies, y'all got to look within y'all self sometimes. And that's all That's all I'm saying about that. But, you know, it took me a long time to get there, but I eventually did. So, fellas, it, it's, it's a hell of a walk, especially, and I'll say this, man, I love my kids, T.T. and Desmond. Y'all know I love y'all. This ain't that. Especially when you didn't want the kid. When you told her, don't hide this baby, I, we, we can't do this. And she hit you with the, I got this nigga, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. And then as soon as she hired a motherfucker, she like, go buy some diapers. And it's like, what the fuck did I tell you? That's already added anger. So on top of that, he hand you $20 and you shit on that. And then y'all not fucking around no more, so you dog him out for that. Like, you not doing nothing but dogging this man out every step of the fucking way. And then... He watching the kids while you on Clubhouse talking shit about them. Like, y'all don't understand. That's the part I'm talking about. Then that affects your child. And that's, I don't know. But I don't know. I just think it was just we had a problem being honest about our situation like most people do because, you know, she refused to lower the, the pole of expectations because I do, I, for the life of me, because I wasn't a bad father. I don't think I was a bad father. I could have done better. I always say that. I wasn't an F. I just wasn't an A. I was somewhere up in there. But you could pass with a D. So I'm saying I was up in there B, C, D or something. Maybe C minus, maybe high D plus. I don't know. Because I know I know. I look back on my life. I ain't fucking shy about that. It, it's, it's about growth. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't that I was a bad father. I wasn't a father. I was 16, you know what I'm saying? I was 17, that's what I'm saying about old girl. He's a fucking ex-con who work at a bodega. He's not fucking some rich-ass nigga just saying, fuck your kid. Like, I don't know, man. And those four gifts that I got them for Christmas, that was all I had. <laughs> but that's, that's all he got. If nigga work at a bodega and give you $50, goddamn, bitch. What the fuck, like... <sighs> I don't know, man. I just know. I mean, ain't, ain't, I don't know, man. It's one of those situations where it kind of fucked me up. I know taking care of a kid and loving the kid and getting dogged out by the mother, that shit hurts. I know a lot of niggas won't say that shit, but I say it for y'all fellas. It do hurt. And then in my case, <laughs> this just me talking about me. When I told her that, she said, so what? And that hurt too. And she didn't give a fuck. So I had to get to the point where I'm like, this motherfucker really don't give a fuck. So let me back the fuck up away from you. Even though we got kids, let me get the fuck away from you because I'm going to end up fucking you up. And then I'm going to be the bad guy. Oh, man, you beat on a motherfucking girl. This girl told me I don't love my kids. Y'all don't give a fuck about how much that hurt me. And me, I just gave her my last $50 and she treated me like I wasn't shit when I did it. Y'all don't give a fuck about that shit, and a man should hold it together. Blah. Yeah, a man should hold it together, but how long are you supposed to be able to beat on this man just because he your kid father, and he got to take it? And he not with you. <laughs> like that. It's not like y'all together, and you cooking for this nigga washing his clothes. No. You live over there, I live over here, and you still want to spit in my face? Get the fuck, fuck that. That's all I'm saying, man. And I don't know, so... All of that shit be crazy, and then they get to hitting us with, you know, you ain't shit, and you ain't shit at being a father and taking care of the kids, and then they go all off into where you get it from and all that shit. I don't give a fuck about all that shit about where I got it from or who teach me or who didn't teach me, man. Fuck that. What my mama did or didn't do or what my daddy did and, you know, all that goofy shit, man. Y'all can roam y'all past beating people with sticks and all that shit if y'all want to. I, I'm not going to do that. 
like for real i don't come to realizations about shit with my mama and my daddy and my family and how i was raised and where i was raised i'm not going back down that road for what that has nothing to do with how i raised my goddamn kids i learned what i needed to learn i'm moving on i ain't walking around beating people in my past with no stick that's what i'm saying i'm not coming down at my baby mama but that's facts that's how the shit went I learned from it. Move on, fellas. Ladies, too. Whatever. But I suggest we use that wood to build something instead of busting each other in the head. But that's just me. But I'm going to be right here. After, after you go scrolling down memory lane, I'll be standing right here in the present walking towards the future. When y'all ready to do some shit and move forward and fix some shit, because that's all I'm here to do. With, but having these talks and being honest and um being ready to change you know that's what's gonna fix shit you know what i'm saying but it's needed like like even if it hurt or you got to put your fucking pride to the side like if y'all love y'all babies like y'all say y'all do then unask that goddamn truth ladies for real like that's that's where i'm at with my older kids because my younger ones like they don't know the dirt bag, Michael. <laughs> like, let's just keep it simple. Like, all they know is this, like, back and forth to work, married to Janetta, happy ass vacation, dinner, and sitting around matching fucking pajamas. That, that's all they know. They don't know none of this other shit. My older kids do know. Like, Nick, Michael, Michaela, all they know is a happy, smiling daddy. But I had to learn and grow to get to this point. I had to have conversations to get to this point i had to meet people and look at things i had to peel my fucking eyeballs back and say nigga what you doing wrong to get to this point so that's what i'm saying but the quicker you do it the quicker you can have at you know having a good even place to co-parent and that's all this is really about because i really believe that you know kids be out carrying around shit man that's not theirs it's ours you know what i'm saying and we some hoes because we really just don't want to unask that truth i like it i had to have those conversations man for real like look tt desmond booby flat out what y'all got what questions y'all got let's let's do it let, let, let me run through some shit for y'all one time let me think like if my kids ask me they might come over to my house now me and Janetta got a nice crib. We married or whatever. Let's say one of them peel off their fucking head and say, well, why we didn't hide this stuff like this, daddy, when we was growing up? I'm going to be honest. I ain't got time to fuck around with these kids. I love you. Because I was broke as fuck and I was a kid and I shouldn't have been out here fucking around, let alone fucking and having kids that I couldn't afford to take care of. Flat out. I don't give a fuck what your mama said. We shouldn't have been doing that stupid shit. Flat out. I wasn't ready to be no father. I wasn't ready to grow up. I was still running around this bitch going to college and playing high school basketball. So I'm going to, that's the truth I'm going to give you. Next, <laughs> like, I ain't got time. Let's go with the question. Well, like my baby mama say, well, you buy this and you buy this. So my kids, because, you know, she cracked off on me about that through my life. Well, what about this, daddy? You had cars and motorcycles and shit. Look, son, I had some hoes buy that for me. Your daddy was out here on some bullshit. Flat out. So why you didn't get a job? Well, I did try to work some jobs and I quit because of child support and shit, but my pride wouldn't let me neck it out because it was a point in my life where my image and what was going on out in these streets was more important than y'all because I was lost in the sauce and I'm out of it now. What you want to do? You want to go forward or no? Like, I'm not finna be just on that shit, man. I'm sorry. Accept the apology. And we can move on flat out. I don't owe you nothing. I don't owe your mother nothing. I don't owe no explanations to no community or none of that. You're my child. If you want to move forward with me, let's go. You my kid's mother. If you want to move forward, let's go. If not, then fuck it. Like, that's where it's at. Why you not with my mama? Like, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have to probably cross that bridge with Michael because he be already beating around the bush with the shit now. <laughs> For real, man. But I ain't holding that nigga up, man. Shit, my oldest kids, T.T. and Desmond, wasn't shit up with your mama. 
Like, simple as that, man. Like, I'm not finna let my kids carry this bag around thinking that maybe they was the problem. No, nigga, me and your mama were never together. We was just fucking. I know what the fuck she said to you or what you might be thinking. Maybe she didn't say nothing. And that's my point. We'll let kids grow up wondering shit. I'm not gonna let my kids wonder. Because that wonder can turn to hate. That hate can turn into this nigga blowing somebody's head off because they backed into his car or because they cut him off at the gas station. No. Me and your mom ain't together because we was never together. It's not you. I tell them that. It was never them. It wasn't a day that went by that I didn't love these motherfuckers when they was born. I was fucking right there. And I've been there the best way I could be since they've been fucking born. And that's just simple as that. Like, it, some of y'all really, y'all, have y'all had that talk with y'all kid? It ain't you. The shit I'm going through in life is not you. It was me. I shouldn't have had you. Y'all motherfuckers don't want to say that. Mm -mm. Cause some reason you think that that makes you a bad father or a bad mother for being honest. Get the fuck out of here, man. For real. If we had to force that situation, shit, I'd probably just be how does them 25, 20, so I'd just be getting out of jail. I'd have killed that motherfucking bitch if we'd have tried to force that situation, be together, try to be a family, man. Get the fuck out of here. Y'all know who she is. I ain't bad mouthing no motherfucking body. I ain't no way I could have did that shit, man. For real. As far as booby, if she asked me. Shit, me and your mama was together. I was cheating. I was a dirtbag. She had to go. I went to college, man. I was fucking every bitch up in there with a vowel in their goddamn name. Like, it's no fucking reason why she should have stayed. So it ain't. It still ain't you. It's me. It wasn't your mama. It was me. Like, now you want to move on? You want to put that bag down? Put it down. That ain't yours. All that heavy shit you carrying around for nothing, man. Get the fuck. Michael asked me, man, look, man, me and your mom was just fucking. Like, <laughs> point blank. Like, it's, it's nothing more than that, man. Like, I loved him. I'm not trying to turn over no coal or nothing. But I'm just saying, when y'all women get to the point and say, you know what? That nigga was just fucking me, and I shouldn't have had this baby. And he is a regular nigga or a broke nigga. Then we can fucking move on, man. Like, so how you end up with Nick, mama? <laughs> you know let's just say nigga pill off one of them asked me that man or whatever because that was my woman like if if i'm just saying if i'm having this conversation with michael so how you end up with janetta and not my mama okay son because your daddy was out here on some bullshit i cheated on with your mother not on your mother like that's just simple as that but all y'all sit down on the couch let's get all six of y'all in here by round y'all motherfuckers up because we're going to be honest it ain't y'all it was never y'all we was on some bullshit all of us it was never y'all motherfuckers anyway moral of the story don't be like your fucking daddy you can be like the nigga i am today but don't be that young michael mm -mm. that nigga was fucking up for real and, and y'all are the evidence of that fucking up i love y'all but here's the proof that's what the fuck I'm saying, man. I, and coming at them like that allows them to put them heavy ass bags down. And and we sit back and watch our kids carry these heavy ass bags for nothing, man. Like for real, because we weak as fuck because we trying to save this fucking image and all this goofy ass shit we be doing. Look, son, your mom and daddy was just fucking, man. Like I ain't trying to be funny. I ain't trying to be mean or nothing like we we both love you and uh although you wasn't playing uh you you here and you gonna be good we're gonna take care of you we're gonna do the best we can do okay but your mom and daddy is broke too so get that jordan shit out your mind why y'all broke because i dropped out of college because i was bullshitting around your mama never went to college so let's not put this extra pressure on yourself about the stuff that you're never going to get and that's why it's important for you to go to school and graduate and go be a fucking lawyer and buy yourself some jordans we got to do that and that's all i'm saying like i'm just not going i'm just not gonna let my kids grow up wondering or my older kids walk around wondering no more and carrying that unneeded weight because i'm trying to save face and still trying to be cool and all that shit man so 
like I said, after all of that, when we all sitting around and they looking at me like, oh, shit, daddy, you a fuck nigga, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Think what you want to think, baby. Don't be like me. Ladies, don't get no lady. Don't get no nigga like that. Flat out. And that's just where the fuck I'm at with it. So, you know, don't be out here throwing that rod around in anybody, son, and throwing it everywhere because look what it got me. Fucking hospital gown and... 10 15 years behind on finances or shit that i should have been doing because i was getting skint by child support because i didn't stay with the mothers i don't got paid another child support she my wife I mean, just think about it like that man so i apologize to my kid's mother for for this stuff but it's facts y'all know that man like i don't be up here lying about nothing and that's where we got to be, like all of us. It, it, it just ain't me. I ain't the only nigga going through this shit. So a motherfucker might be listening to this shit. Don't be trying to act like it's just me, nigga. You got some truth in your goddamn life. You need to peel off first. And some of this shit, and damn near uh, most, it don't even be the kid fucking business. <laughs> like, when you think about it, for real, some of y'all hoes, and this is where I don't like about y'all women, some of y'all bitches be telling this story to a five-year-old. It ain't his fucking business why he can't get no Jordans. Just tell him you no. Just tell him no. They'll be like, I want this mama. No, I can't afford that because your daddy ran off on me with some fat white bitch. And it's like, damn, it's some a pack of fruit snacks. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be honest. And if you are, you won't be having them fucking outbreaks and shit or whatever you want to call them or outburst, you know? fucking like just fucking them kids up from the jump man then we wonder why 10 15 years down the goddamn lines they up there mopping the nigga kool-aid up and tossing them in back of the fucking meat truck and you want to blame his father man get the fuck out of here you had this nigga this whole time giving him that bullshit ass information that's what the fuck i'm saying all because your ass don't want to be honest but whatever like i said man it's only gonna help the kids and making raising them easier you know what i'm saying i really believe that man got these babies really carrying this bullshit around man we ain't shit and i say we i mean we well fuck we fuck these babies well you think all these crazy ass tight pan draco ass motherfucking kids coming from they coming from us our generation man like the way our parents raised us was we kind of i'm 42 so we kind of cracked demic pandemic so niggas was kind of that's where it started at where niggas was like oh shit i can be a millionaire tomorrow if i just sell this and that's where the shortcutting came from that's where all the i need to be this way and dress this way and talk this way and be this that's where all that came from now nah, today y'all motherfuckers let y'all kids they'll be the freshest dumbest goddamn kid in the whole motherfucking school and that's all you care about and that's all they care about and that's all the other students care about. That's where these 22-year-old teachers care about fucking these kids and all that. Because we've been lost in the goddamn sauce. All I want y'all to do is recognize that we lost in the sauce. Then we can fix it. First things first. Let's just admit that we lost. And that's where I'm at with it because I don't know, man. <laughs> Like I said, I, I put it on the women because y'all got the kids. That's not, you know, that's that's that. But I still say we ain't shit then. You know, the mama had a kid the whole time and she get to walk away clean. Kid dead. This nigga, somebody done murdered this nigga, man. And he out of here. And then first thing fly out they mouth is where the father at? This motherfucker been living with this bitch for 17 years. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know, man. Y'all know them. Y'all know y'all be fucking them up way more than y'all y'all like to admit and that's not me taking a jab at nothing but and, and um i say sorry to my baby mama darnita but i'm on me <laughs> and um i'm already balls deep in this conversation with that i'm having right now and i'm not coming for you or i don't know calling for you i don't know whatever these rat holes be saying you know don't be coming for me or don't be calling for me and all that shit man just want to clear that up because sometimes for real, like on some real shit, this bitch be really acting like she be on my mind like that and she don't. Like, I just be telling my life story and you inject yourself into my life. Like, I'm not coming for, or calling whatever. But anyway, case in point, I don't know. She tell my kids how I ain't shit. 
how my family ain't shit. This is just me pointing out how y'all women sometimes fuck these kids up without knowing. Your daddy ain't shit. He ain't never gonna be shit. His family ain't shit. I mean, this, that, everything under the goddamn sun. All Murray's ain't shit. She's pretty sure that Judas last name was Murray. Like, it ain't never been a good Murray to walk the face of the earth. And then what? You drag all that shit out, and then my babies look down at their ID and their last name, Murray. So what the fuck do you think you just told them? Like, for real, man. When you tell them their whole life that their daddy ain't shit, and then when he get 15, you tell them that you just like your daddy. What do you think you just told that baby? Like, that's what the, that's what the fuck I'm saying, man. It's just shit like that, man. And that's another one for y'all ladies, too, man. If you ain't married to a nigga, get that baby your last name. Like, that's one thing I don't like about, you know, I ain't saying you can do what the fuck you want to do. It's your baby. Clearly, it's y'all baby. Y'all going to continue to do what y'all want to do. But me, if I was a woman and I had a baby by a nigga I wasn't married to, I'm giving that baby my last name. Especially when... Murray's ain't shit. That's all the fuck I'm saying. Like, if I ain't shit, my family ain't shit, why would you want a child to carry on that nigga's legacy and not yours? Your family legacy. You, why would you want him to carry on an ain't shit legacy and put that ain't shit stigma and cloud over his head to carry around so people can say, oh, shit, you Mike Murray's son? Oh, nigga, you ain't going to be shit. Like, and now he hearing that from all over the place. Yo, daddy, such and such. Oh, that nigga was in jail. He beat the shit, killed the nigga. Damn, you going to be just like him. He done gave up at seven for a name. And y'all think that shit don't matter, but it do. When y'all name y'all fucking babies, Star Tron Davius and all this goofy shit. They can't spell the shit 314. Get a nigga a regular fucking strong name. You know what I'm saying? For real. Like, that, that shit matter. But I realize that, like, the older I'm getting... This is, this is just something that I'm throwing off on y'all. I'm just saying if a nigga ain't shit and his family ain't shit, they ain't never been shit. Bunch of criminals and fucking knuckleheads and people who do bullshit with y'all throw out there, child molesters, then you name the nigga right after them. Like, I don't get that part. I'm just saying. That's just me. But I don't know. Why would you want a nigga to carry on that legacy? But I'll tell you why. Or I should say what my guess is. I don't know, man. <laughs> is it because... You think you was with the daddy and you really wasn't like we could be honest about that. And you thought you was, was going to be together. You thought you thought he was going to change. Say that. But I'm just saying. But even if you was and he ain't shit, why was you with him? That's why I say that shit to me. It doubled back to the mother because y'all got the kid. I ain't trying to come down on y'all. I'm just saying, man, man, I mean, had to have that talk with my fucking babies about little Michael. Like, for real, man. Being, like, being named after me. Like, I don't know, man. I ain't, I ain't had no say in what, that, what she named him. When I mean, I ain't trying to be all putting the shit out there like that, but it's out there. When I met him, his name was Michael already. And that was just simple as that. Like, and that's not me taking a shot at his mama, but it's facts. She know that. Like, before we uh, did the blood test and all that, man, he was who he was before he got here. I mean, but... Shitty, my son, come on in, sit down, get something to drink. You know what I'm saying? Want some meat, play the game. Like, I'm just saying, facts is facts. But that goes back to, I don't know, man, not being honest or caring about, um, like, how your hurt feelings or whatever might affect somebody else and other people. So what am I supposed to do when that boy been the corner and ask me about it? When my other two sons been the corner and asked me about it? Like, for real, I'm supposed to, what I'm supposed to do, say, yeah, I named you, and then I ran off on you and your mama, and then now nah, he's hating me? Like, I'm not going to do that. You want me to bite the bullet for, or take one for the team, and that's the team shooting at me? My own team shooting at me, and I'm supposed to Bruce Leroy catch these motherfuckers with my teeth? No, I'm not doing that. No. Nah. We're going to keep it a buck. And that's, that, that's just going to make things go smoother after all the bullshit or whatever might come out of it. But this ain't about me. And I hope y'all can just pull the point from it and not take it as just gossip and try to, you know how y'all motherfuckers be. Michael was on his podcast. I don't give a fuck. It's true. 
Motherfuckers know that. For real. I ain't trying to twist no knife or whatever. But, you know, you and your baby daddy fighting and not your you know, if some shit like that happened, y'all get the fight, and now the baby can't see the, y'all can't co-parent, the baby can't see, the daddy can't build no kind of relationship, can't have no relationship with his family, and that's important, if it's a good family, even if it's a bad family, you still want to take your kid over there to show them what not to do, y'all can do that, but, you know, you got to be able to have that kind of open line of communication for your baby daddy side of the family, but whatever, and now they don't have a relationship and and you know what that's how i go but i ain't trying to do none of that because i ain't trying to be arguing and fighting but i'm already balls deep and that's just all on this conversation but check this though like like and this goes to having kids carry like the bullshit but like also your lies and unwillingness i should say to be honest, or withholding information and all that shit that y'all do, or whatever the fuck what y'all say to put y'all to sleep, like, being honest about him, you, your kids, and everything around y'all situation, like, y'all women be putting y'all feelings over what's best for the situation, and the situation is the child, and we gotta really get the fuck away from that, man, I understand he cheated on you, nigga might have beat you and knocked you between the washer and dryer, nigga might have used you and took your tax money and all that, but the truth of the matter is, this baby here, and we got to fix that. And that's just where I'm at with it. And, you know, why y'all shouldn't, you know, name the child out the nigga you not married to or at least with. I don't know, man. Like, I just I don't know. So, now, uh, Michael Mama named him Michael, like, without ever having a conversation with me. Like, and this is just me tapping on, not giving a fuck about the man feelings not giving a fuck about like how it affects people around that situation and whatever right so she named michael him michael jr without ever having a conversation with me and she clearly didn't give a fuck to know that i never wanted a junior and i always like wanted my kids to like have and like start their own legacy just have your own name. Just go. Do, you don't need this Mike Murray pressure on you, whether it's good or bad. Because I say, if you, I don't know, Jeffrey Dahmer's son, that's bad. And it's a lot to carry. But if you LeBron James' son, that's a, it's good, but it's still a lot to carry. That's my reasoning for my kids having their own name. That's just me personally. So when it happened, I was upset. Truth of the matter is, she didn't give a fuck. And that's my point now. Anyway, if I wanted a junior, I could have named Desmond or Nick that. Both of them older than him. Now, this is this is not me of Sharon. If you hear this, you know this ain't me trying to do nothing beefed out with you or nothing like that. No, it's not. I'm just making a point about when people make decisions and don't give a fuck. That's because you didn't give a fuck. Let's keep it 100. You named your baby what you wanted to name your baby, and that's it. But we moved on from it, and that's my point. We got to be honest about things. I shouldn't have been fucking her raw at the end of the fucking day. That's what I mean about being honest. I put myself in that situation. But anyway, I ain't never want no junior or whatever. I could have named Desmond or Nick that. But now she at home with Michael. Just like y'all women be at home with y'all kids. And she ain't got to be there when I... Got to explain to Desmond and Nick about why I didn't name them after me. That's driving the wedge between me and my other kids because people not being honest. So when I had them talks with Desmond and Nick, I'm supposed to bite the bullet for this situation over here. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be honest. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean about people being honest and to take away the fighting. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying then she don't do that. I ain't saying she don't do that. It don't be my business. I have my talks with my kids. That's just me. But she don't got to be there for that like especially Desmond because he my firstborn and I got to explain to Michael like about why I'm not with him considering that he's named after me that's just ladies use that as a template to how y'all shit can spin off 
this these and I felt like and I don't I'm not saying that it's true about her or not, but, you know, it's whatever it is, what it is. That's you trying to prove that he's my child or you trying to prove that he's somebody's child. And then how that spins off to something else. Now, I got to have these conversations with my boys, with, with, with Nick and Mike, with Nick and Desmond. And I got to have a conversation with Michael, too. That's what I'm saying about. The name shit, not giving a fuck about people, but whatever. And I'm not saying that she's a bad person because, like I said, I'm not taking a dig at Sharon. Let's just be clear about that. It's facts, though. And another thing, and I, I swear, man, I ain't trying to really go there. And I'll get off of her real quick. My oldest kid's mother insinuates that I ran off on my family. Now, my older kids come to me we have a conversation because they older they asked me about it as same way somebody else did that was called they self on her side of being her friend my baby mama friend like i'm not gonna say the person name but clearly you not her friend but whatever it's not my place um you know the whole what y'all could have been if y'all would have stayed together putting out there that i ran off on my family and that's what i mean about being honest that affects kids i shouldn't have never had to have this conversation with my kids about me running off if the mother would have just told them that we was never together that's bags that our kids got to carry around but we do that shit that's all the fuck i'm saying it wasn't no it was never no together like i live with this is a quick right now conversation with my kids <laughs> What happened with you and my mama? Why y'all not together? Why y'all couldn't be together? Whatever. Okay, it was never no together. I lived with my mama from the time I was born. High school, college, moved with Coco. After I moved out from with Coco, I moved back with my mama for a little while. Then I moved in with Muff. After I moved with Muff, we bounced around a little bit, fucking with her from Taylor to Detroit. By that time, you five, six, seven, eight years old. You, you know what's going on. Um, from there, I moved back in with my mom, my, my dad. I was staying with my dad for a couple of years because um, that was kind of like the height of my scumbag, and I think around then. But and it's hard to scum when you're living with a bitch, <laughs> like to be honest. So anyway, that's it's just less of a less of a headache. Like, and that's a note the niggas who want a dirt bag. Don't be trying to live with no bitch and be no dirt bag. Go get your own spot. That way you ain't got to be at home at no certain time. Motherfucker, leave your phone faced up and the ringer on. All kind of shit, man. You can get your dirt bag on. Whatever. I'm just saying. Anyway, from my dad's, I bought the house next door to my daddy. And from there, I'm at where I'm at now, living with my wife and beautiful kids and grandkids and all this stuff. And a whole different nigga. Whatever. Now, I say that to say this, man. To run off, you got to be there. To stay together, y'all got to be together. Like to leave a home, you got to once stayed in that home. That's a bag you're giving kids when you tell your child, your daddy ran off on us versus telling him, I fucked that nigga in the bathroom at a club. That's how you got here. T don't don't do him like that. Don't do your baby like that. Don't do yourself like that. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that's what happened with me and my baby mama. I ain't doing that. But I'm saying some of y'all know that y'all was just fucking this nigga. But y'all will hand that bag to y'all kid and say, carry around this hate for your father that don't belong. And then when they get too heavy and they give up on life because they feeling so heavy because mama don't want me because she always cussing at me because I look at I look like my daddy and he ain't shit. And she say I'm just like him. He don't give a fuck because he never wanted me. Now they always arguing about me. I'm taking his money and oh, that baby standing there with this bag and they get too heavy. They put it down, pick up a goddamn gun because now they got to get some revenge because they hurt. People don't. Y'all motherfuckers ain't ready for this kind of shit i'll be kicking let me get the fuck on because it's like an hour and i can go on this shit all day because y'all motherfuckers because i don't think people realize how much that shit really affects a motherfucker talking to some of these little kids and listen like when y'all motherfuckers sit put the goddamn blunt down and, and get up out your shit one time and go talk to a goddamn kid of a of somebody and you know the parents fucked up 
You got friends and you know the mom and the daddy fucked up. Talk to that kid and listen to what the fuck that kid be saying. If you can get the kid to open up, let me say that. If you can get them to open up to you and tell you some shit, one line will fuck you up. I don't think my parents love me. That should be crazy. And then when you start wondering why, it's because they've been handing this nigga bags of bricks his whole life. Then as soon as they get 18, what y'all do? Slingshot them right out the fucking door as if you did something for them. And don't let the kid go pro. <laughs> Your mama did it all for you. And the first thing come out, they mouth, I'm going to buy mama a house and all that shit, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. I was having a talk with a guy before I get back into that. Like, how kids is. They parents' retirement plan. Some of you bitches can't wait for one of your kids to go pro or go be a doctor or get a good job so they can rescue your bum ass because we fucked. I'm going to say we, not them. We fucked up and had them too young and we never went to college. We never graduated. We never got a job. We never did all this shit. And now we riding down on our motherfucking kids to go pro or drop a mixtape or any fucking thing that's going to rescue them and us fuck out of here man but i'm just keeping the shit of me man to to be some of this shit y'all tell these kids like he ran off on us <laughs> the nigga gotta be there with you and live with you and be a family and let's get this shit out the way too if a nigga stayed with you and he didn't work <laughs> You paying all the bills. He fucked you and y'all had a baby, then he left. Bitch, y'all wasn't never together anyway. When a nigga with you, he gonna help you. He not gonna sit there and watch this shit go on. I had to have that talk with motherfucker when I decided to nail the shit down and say I'm flying straight with Jeanette. I had to have a talk with a bitch. Did you really believe I was your goddamn man, bitch? I ever gave you a dollar on anything, bitch? We ever been on a date? Bitch, I ain't never met your mama nothing. We been fucking around two years. Like, get the fuck out of here. And then when you hit him with that honesty, she settled down and was like, yeah, you right. Okay, well, I'm about to go marry my goddamn wife. Fuck you. And that's where the fuck we... I'm just keeping the shit a beam, man. I ain't trying to twist no knife on nobody. I'm just saying. We ain't, we ain't never lived together. <laughs> like, we ain't never been on no goddamn date. None of that shit, man. We was just fucking. Now, I go back to what I said earlier. Some of this shit don't even be the kid fucking business five six seven years old y'all up here telling this kid i fucked up his daddy is this nigga don't even know what being a fucked up daddy mean until you teach him it or a fucked up mama for that for that point yo man your mama man did this fuck me in the game nigga i ain't telling my kids that shit hey, ask tt and desmond all the shit i ever been through with they mama ask them what i tell them that's still your mama that's still your mama you still got to respect her. Well, daddy, you said fuck that bitch. That's still your mama, though. I, I, that She not my mama. I ain't never put no bad shit in they fucking ears about they mama. And I could have. And I, and, I, and I refuse to. They old enough now. They just fucking see whatever they feel like they need to see. But when they was five, six, seven years old, nah. I be mad. I cuss her out. I talk shit behind her back and I be over here with my brother and them or whatever. Man, I'm going to murder this bitch, you know. But I ain't going to tell my kids that because that ain't they bag. They didn't ask me to dip my dick in that goddamn girl raw. So once we get to that point, and like I said, it takes time to get there. I'm not saying that. But to be honest, we got to be honest <laughs> like for real i mean i'm just trying to get the fuck on because i'm a little past an hour i don't be trying to keep y'all that long but you know just hearing that part come out that like i for somehow ran off on my kids man that's what that goes back to um hurting the feelings she ain't give a fuck <laughs> about how my kids was gonna take that lie for real hold up Had to turn my little space heater thing off and get a little nip back here sometimes, like whatever. But, you know, this is just me pointing things out that happened in my life, and hopefully y'all can learn from it. Because saying something like that to your child, ladies, you don't know how it's going to affect them, especially at 7, at 10. 
you damn sure can't do it at 11, 12, 13 because they at the, that's when, especially the boys, they at that corner. They at that fork in the road where that's who they about to become, who they're going to be the rest of their life. And if you hand them the wrong fucking bag at that age, that's the difference between going to a graduation or his funeral. And y'all motherfuckers got to, and that has nothing to do with the father. If that baby live and it's just you and him, like you say, me and my king, then bitch, treat him like one and keep the negativity away from him. Even if that negativity was your bad choice. If his father ain't shit, you fuck that nigga. That's all the fuck I'm saying. I ain't taking no jab at nobody. So when I have these conversations about what happened with me and my kids, mother, it's it's because we refuse to acknowledge our situation and be honest about it. Michael, Desmond needs some Jordans. I don't have a job. You ain't shit. Well, I didn't have a job when I fucked you neither. See how quick that go? Now go buy him some fucking shoes from Walmart because you is a Walmart baby. Be honest with the kid. You can't get no Jordans. Why? Because your mom and daddy broke. Fuck all this saving face and trying to compete with the neighbors and all that shit. Fuck that. No. Ask my oldest kids, man. When y'all, if ever one of y'all want to take the time, I'll ask them what I tell them. Mm -hmm. I see what I can do. I need this. I need this. My kids not older. They talking about cars and I ain't trying to put your business out there, booby and all that shit. But like graduation, fucking she graduating college, all kind of shit. They ask for different shit now. TT got a baby, y'all, man. It's a whole different ball game these days. But what I'm saying is, I'm going to be honest with you. Your daddy ain't got it like that. I'll see what I can do. I'll help you out. But uh, don't fuck that shit. But I don't know. Just keeping it 100 with shit like me and my baby mama, we just never lived together, man. We was never together. Why the fuck would you say that? Like, for real. <laughs> mm -mm. Why would you not fuck me? Why would you tell your kids that and have them carry that bag around, man? For real. I'm, I remember back in the day, and this is a side note, though. It just popped in my head, like, thinking about that. Like, I remember I used to take bitches over her house and fuck them in her basement. Like, but that's another story, man. That's a, so, oh, sweet Jesus, man. But on my mama's eyes, man. I done gunned a few bitches down at my baby mama house in her basement. And I know niggas might be like, that's wild. Point is, I couldn't have been not that bad of a person if you let me gun bitches down in your basement or in, I'm at your crib and all. Like, I, that's a whole different story. Point is, me and her handed our kids bags that they shouldn't have been carrying because we wasn't fucking honest. And that's what I'm using that as an example for, for y'all to take that and use it and say you know what man michael said this is how this was gonna turn out and it did i'm not lying to y'all it turned out this way all those arguments through the years could have really been knocked out if we'd have just been honest you had a baby with a fucking student athlete who was broke as fuck quit being mad quit arguing with me let me get my baby let me see him once a week like i was gonna see him because i ain't no father i'm learning on the job you ain't no mother we learning on the job when you f do that, makes it easier for the child. And you can keep, collectively, y'all can agree to keep certain shit from the kid. You don't talk about that baby. You don't talk about me to the baby. I won't talk about him to you, about you. And we can, we can move along. We can hide this baby thinking that we millionaires or that we the best parents in the world if we want to, if we do it together. And then he'll walk off thinking he's a prince because he's the son of a king and a queen. Nah, y'all motherfuckers want to tip the scale and I did it myself and I'm queen and fuck that nigga. All right, we'll see. But like I said, man, that shit is some other shit, man. I'm just finna wrap the shit up. But I forgot, though, man, that was over there on um, Schoolcraft and Robeson back in the day. That was some wild days. I had that Monte Carlo and shit. I used to be over there fucking around. Nah, me and Muff stayed on Robeson. Whatever that block was over there, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about with the light down the street from D-Nut and uh, Miss Blue. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I had that black whole ass black ass Monte Carlo, but anyway, that shit was wild. But that's where, you know, that's where some women like 
uh, I don't know, man, muddy the water a little bit, you know what I'm saying, in order to save face. You know, when y'all say, like, a nigga ran off on y'all, that kind of explains to the kid why y'all struggling. Putting the blame on the father by saying, he ran off on us, that's why I can't get you to Jordans. Versus, he was never here, and mama works at fucking Walmart. I can't afford the Jordans. I shouldn't have had you. We shouldn't have been fucking. You was unplanned. Don't make the same mistake mom and daddy did. Instead of doing that, you would just throw the shit off on the daddy or hand the bag to the kid. Well, when you throw it off on the daddy, that's handing the bag to the kid too because now he thinking like, was I the reason he ran off? Because you're such a wonderful woman and it ain't you because you're, you're queen of the year. You mother of the century. So it wasn't you. It had to be me, mama. I'm sorry. And now your kid walking around with that. Come on now. Y'all motherfuckers ain't ready for that shit. You driving a wedge in between him and his child. And you don't even know it because you want to save face. Blocking that kid. Relationship with him and his family. His mama can't see the kid because he cheated on you. Now the, the, your baby don't even know his fucking grandma. Because his daddy was a dirtbag and you fucked a dirtbag. You a dirtbag too. Like come on man. Y'all both was smutting it out. Like for real man. You <laughs> I don't know, man. Just got your baby carrying around that hate for nothing. I don't like that shit. Listening to that goddamn girl and this man just got out of fucking prison and he doing all the fuck he got to do and you treating this nigga like he ain't shit. He might not be shit, but what I'm saying is you did that. Get your, pick your part up. You take half of them bricks out your baby bag and he take the other half, goddammit, and, and get him off your baby back. That's all the fuck I'm saying. Because for real, you teaching your kid that his daddy ain't shit and if he in the baby life, he a decent nigga if you ask me. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But like I said, got him carrying that hate around and driving that wedge. And here's the thing y'all ladies fail to miss too. Later on in life, you possibly driving your own wedge because your kid gonna get older. And if you ain't shit, they gonna get older and see it. When they start meeting other parents and start hanging out with their friends and they see how mothers really acting. <laughs> This mother ain't never drinked and smoked in front of the kids and you passing him the blunt thinking it's cool or you drinking with your daughter and having twerk offs with her and you think that's going to drive a wedge later on. They're going to be like, damn, mama, you ain't raised me right. All that shit you said about my daddy, you was lying. All that shit you said about my grandma, I went over there the other day. She, she cool. Because what happened with you? That's all the fuck I'm saying. But all for what though? Self-pride? I don't know. <laughs> Social media, some shit, comments. You know how y'all be seeing these bitches on here. I'm doing it by myself. Then here come a hundred bitches. You right, queen. Fuck the fuck out of here, man. Miss me with that shit, man. All this fake ass fucking women empowerment shit. Y'all like to stick together on and shit. Meanwhile, these little niggas running around blowing each other heads off left and right. And it ain't because of the goddamn daddy all the time. I'm, I, and I stand on that for real. For real, all this facade you want to put on at the expense of your fucking kids mental and emotional fucking well-being <laughs> and motherfuckers don't see that mm -hmm. so again this ain't me coming down on nobody in particular i'm definitely not coming down on my kids mother i think they did the best job that they can do it's just in certain spots i feel like they was withholding information and or not being honest and i'm telling y'all other women where it ends up at you still somebody's gonna have to answer that question either you the father some nigga on the corner the grandma his girlfriend her boyfriend they're gonna get to an age where they ask that question how did i get like this why am i living the way that i'm living and those questions going those answers gonna start flowing out and you could have been done gave them to him and gave him another way to operate with them and that's all I'm saying, man. Like, do all that shit and you such a wonderful mother. Piece of fucking shit, if you ask me, man. But on the real, ladies, before I get the fuck on, like, for real, that's one thing I wanted to say, too. Quit naming it. I really want to drive that point home. Quit naming these kids after these niggas. Like, if you ain't married to the nigga, for real. I mean, un unless what I said is true. Make me be a liar. You know what I'm saying? You doing it to prove to everybody that y'all was fucking. Like, for real, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know why you would want your child to carry on an ain't shit legacy. 
why you want your kid to carry on a mistake you made? I don't know, man, but whatever. I just look at it like that. I'm sorry, but it's true. Especially women with multiple baby daddies. Let me down, down below that for a minute. Like, because uh, we was talking about that the other day, like having babies and like naming them after giving the kids the daddy's last name and you got multiple baby daddies. Like, come on, man. That shit whack. Mm hmm. <laughs> That shit, I'm, I was taking me a drag, man. But, oh shit, man. Now this bitch, like, she got nine last names in her fucking house. For real. Think about that, man. Hers and her eight different baby daddies. Fuck out of here. Now you calling these motherfuckers off like the military at child time or something, man. Davis, Jones, Red, and Edwards. All juniors, man. Kevin Jones Jr., Marcus fucking Bates Jr., Tavion Smith Jr., all fucking different last names floating around your house. But on the real, get them babies your last names because, like, something that the kids don't know that we know as adults, whether we want to be honest or not, if we fell out the same pussy, we full brothers and sisters. Like, no matter if we got different daddies, if we fell out the same pussy, we really brothers and sisters, so we should have the same last name. Like, but that other baby that your daddy got, yeah, like, yeah, but yeah, you know how y'all feel about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? We cool, but but you know, man, this motherfucker fell out the same pussy. That's why y'all should have the same last name. That's what I'm saying. Don't put the division on your kids by naming them fucking Davis Jones and fucking whatever the fuck. Don't do that, ladies, like, for real. And you make yourself look bad, if you ask me, but I don't know, man. So just make it just make it even by just giving them your last name. Fuck it. And then when you get married to a nigga, the real nigga that come along that's going to do what he got to do, then change your baby last name to that nigga last name, too. I ain't saying I'm cool with that, because I'm not. I'd be mad. But if it happened, and I would, I would be, I would have, I'd rather take that than... <laughs> eight last names in my baby house and he wondering where he fit at in the mix or she you know what i'm saying that's all the fuck i'm saying but and it tosses the conversation on him too on the father later on if he got multiple baby mamas if you got a ain't shit ass baby daddy and he got seven eight baby mamas then when he take the kids out he got the davis reed jones and all that don't do that to yourself let him do let him have to explain that shit to his mama or whatever but and let him show up with them five last names. I don't know. Mm. That's just something that crossed my mind. You know what I'm saying? But when y'all all named the kid after him, y'all got him looking like fucking Don Juan out here because he got all six of y'all stupid bitches running behind him naming his kids after him. And he ain't shit. So that's that, man. Like, like he's something special, but whatever. I'm just saying. That's just another bag that we hand our kids to carry. You know, that could put them down because, like I said, motherfuckers see your kid and be like, "Oh shit, you Mike Murray's son? The Murray's ain't shit." Now your kid, like, damn, when it could have been your last name. I'm just saying, some the extra bag you could take that. But anyway, I'm off that man. I get the fuck on. It's an hour and a half, man. If y'all still with me, y'all the shit. But let me pull it together and make it make sense. I don't know. I guess versus me just coming down on my kids mothers or something like that or old girl on what's the name because that ain't what it's about it just happened to go that way y'all know i'll be in here just talking shit but blame that chick on clubhouse man don't blame me she the one that kicked this shit off and she was the one you know we was asking her questions and like most of these hoes out here man she ain't really had no solid answers you know what i'm saying so i felt the need to speak on it to help try to clear it up a little bit you know what i'm saying like if you got a regular dude you got a regular baby daddy that work at a bodega that just got a bodega that just got out of prison and make eight dollars an hour. Stop expecting Jordans from that nigga. Please, ladies, trust me, it will take the weight off your shoulder so much and the babies. Don't let that baby think he a Jordan baby coming out of a Jordan situation and his daddy just not doing it. If you got a rich baby daddy and he not doing it, flame his ass. But if he work at the bodega, chill out. That's all the fuck I'm saying, man, for real. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know if she didn't have no real answer or she was afraid to give us the real answer because just want to spend it on niggas and us not ask another question. I don't know what it is, but why you hire that baby if y'all wasn't together? That, that That's one of the first questions we got to do that. And she say, I didn't want a baby by the bum ass niggas. So why you let the nigga hit you raw? Well, you know how I go and things just happen. But he ain't shit and he out of my life. You, you know, then she went to that kind of shit. So why you name the kid out them? This goofy bitch actually said, and I mean like out her mouth and into my innocent ears. She said, so who am I supposed to name him after? Yo daddy, bitch. I don't know your brother. Like, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> Who the fuck you supposed to name out the man? That shit blew me away, bitch. I don't know Kevin Gates, bitch. Usher Raymond. I don't know. Name nigga Michael Jordan or something. I don't give a fuck. Tom Selleck. Like, anybody but this bum ass nigga. You said he a bum and he ain't shit. So why the fuck would you want to carry on that legacy? That's where, I mean, I don't know. That's where it hit me at when the way she was saying how he ain't shit. And then you named the nigga after him. So I don't know how that go. That's why. That's why I say give them their own name. That's I mean, going into that too, man, to try to wrap this up, but not no dumb shit neither. Uh, we don't need no more Starkeishas and all that shit. But anyway, what makes a good father, man? To me, understanding, accepting your situation and effort. Like, just really understanding your situation, man. And Like, to the men and to the women too, just to both. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you understand your situation that you really had a baby by a nigga who work at a bodega, it makes it so much easier to understand that maybe this $40 is all he got. Understand that you had a baby by a nigga who is only going to work at a bodega. He's a fucking ex-con. Like, accepting it and moving on from accepting it and understanding. And then putting in an effort to make it better put the effort in not to say that slick shit to him when he can give you the 40 don't make the effort to say thank you man i'm glad you here you picked him up for the weekend i appreciate it i need some rest like that don't hurt that only helps the child now he's smiling you smiling kids see y'all smiling they gonna smile whatever y'all say when y'all separate do that that's all the fuck i'm saying but and y'all ladies gotta really understand they understand and accept it and appreciate the effort if the nigga putting in effort let me say that too man because whatever level he's on he's going to be on until he go to another one some niggas don't want to go to no another level some niggas out here man and i ain't taking no jabs at nobody but like i was listening in one group and the nigga was talking about truck driving and he was like yeah man i make four thousand dollars uh what do you say i make uh about, about thirty five hundred dollars four thousand dollars a week i'm cool ladies understand that he's cool if you have a baby by that nigga that's what you're gonna get for the rest of your life because he done made the decision on his life so understand that man you ain't got no baby with no fucking barack obama no jay-z or nothing like that man you had a baby with a nigga who work at foot action making 22 working 22 hours a week and he cool with that and if he in the child life and he loving and he doing right by it, I mean, don't block their relationship because y'all didn't work out or because you, because he not reaching your unrealistic expectations, I should say. But because truth is, whether we want it for our kids or not, some of our kids don't deserve the best because mom and daddy just didn't put in the work to get it. And we don't work hard enough to get it for them. And we can't throw that off on the mama or throw that off on the daddy. What what you doing? You know what I'm saying? For real. Like, mom and daddy dropped out in the ninth grade and shit. We still decided to hire your ass. But don't be like us. Tell the kid that, man. Your mama was a hoe. I was weak and pussy. I had you to keep the nigga. Like, tell them the fucking truth. And then we can move on and, or they can move on. We can stay stuck if that's what the fuck you want to do. For real. It, it just really lifts the weight, man, when you accept your situation. And, I don't know, man. Not letting, not letting it bother you to co-parent and, you know, giving the baby that name. That cut the shit out. I really want to push that. <laughs> For real. That shit kind of fuck me up. And, you know, if he get mad about like, damn, why you ain't name my baby after me? Tell the nigga the truth right then, man. Because you ain't marry me. We not together, nigga. This my baby. Fuck you. And if he a real nigga, he'd be like, oh, I get it. If he a fuck nigga, 
fuck them. Still fuck them. Because the first things first is the kid. So, like I said, man, like I said at the top, or you could take the motherfuckers to the hitman office. You can admit that early on. Fuck, I'm pregnant. God damn, this nigga ain't shit. Let me go and make this appointment. We can we can go that quick. Ain't nobody. Gonna, I'm not gonna hold it against you. I don't know about whoever else is, but I'm just saying, like, I'm I'm a definitely a, a fan of the hitman office because some of these goddamn kids out here, y'all fucking them up all because you want to act like. You so concerned about life and how the baby is, but yet your punk ass won't go back to school to get a job to get make more money to take care of them better. So you can't love them too much. You don't love them too enough to tell them the truth that you and your daddy, I was just fucking your daddy. You don't love them that much, but you'll love them enough not to take them to the hitman office. That shit confuses me sometimes. That's all the fuck I'm saying. But anyway, before I dip, I want to say... To my kids' mothers, I was not taking no jabs at y'all. I ain't trying to do nothing like that. I'm damn sure not trying to shake my situation <laughs> at all. So to Darnita and Sharon, I'm just telling my life story. Y'all know how I went. Y'all know I ain't lying or nothing like that. We in a good space. And I'm not, I'm just using this as an example. So I'm not trying to twist no knife on nobody. I hope people can take some of these situations I was talking about and learn from them so we can get along better because at the end of the day, it's all about them goddamn babies. And if y'all don't see it that way, then fuck you. That's how I really feel about it. But Mike with a mic 313 at gmail.com. That's Mike with a mic 313 at gmail.com. That's if you got any questions, talk, we got topics, you want to send some shit in and submit some music. I keep saying I'm going to get back to that. Now, obviously, I'm not, but I'm trying. Um, we got DeuceFireClothing.com. We got DetroitCousins.com. CreatedByJones.com. PlatinumStatus.com. Betty's Girls Party Event Planning on Instagram. That's my wife's stuff. Go hype that up. If y'all It's about to get hot. I know y'all want to set some shit up. Y'all can get y'all shit set up, and y'all can buy some clothes from us, and everybody be cool. Um, let me plug my man again. Above all cuts, my man DB over there, 19229 West Warren. He's the master barber. That's what they be saying, man. He got the cuts on the back of the car. I wish I could show y'all the car, but it's 19229 West Warren in Detroit on the west side, of course. 313-522-9132. Tell them Mike sent you. I don't know if that'll give me a discount or nothing, but I'm going to get the fuck out of here. I'm going to go on and sucker punch this clock one time. Get back to being uh, the regular guy that I've learned to accept and be at this point. We can reach for other shit, but don't hate where you're at. That's all this is really about, man. We got to find some kind of way to get along. And when we do that, shit will go so much smoother. I promise we all got to swallow the pride. I get it. But y'all be safe, man. Y'all have at it. I'm going to get the fuck out of here before I don't have a job. You were just listening to...